Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you how to add four momentary switches to your RadioMaster TX16S. And you're not going to have to drill the first hole. When I first bought my RadioMaster TX16S, I wasn't aware that there was an extra set of trim switches on the radio. This T5 and T6, these are not for throttle and elevator. Those two are here and here depending on which mode you fly. But it comes with T5 and T6, and I'm not sure what those are used for. Honestly, I haven't done any research to try and figure it out, but as long as I've had the radio, it's kind of perplexed me as to what those things are for. Anyway, I was just thinking about it the other day and I thought, you know, those switches are really nothing but a momentary switch. If you click this switch and let it go, it goes click and back to the middle. That's going up. If I push down and let go, it goes down and back to the middle. That's a momentary switch. It's just two momentary switches in one device. Same thing with T6. Down, up. So it's just a momentary switch. So I got to thinking, what if the software will recognize those momentary switch presses, then I've got one, two, three, four, four momentary switches. So let's take a look at Companion and I'll show you how to set this up. There are really three things that we're going to do on this configuration today. The first one is I'm going to show you something new that I learned that really doesn't have anything to do with momentary switches at all, but I figured I'd show it to you anyway, and that's the throttle source here on the setup page. After that, we're going to create some logical switches, one for trim five and one set for trim six. After that, we'll move on to special functions. I've got one set up to reset timers and one set up to arm and disarm the motor. Before we get into the momentary switch bit, I wanted to stop and show you one little thing that I picked up doing some reading and research on OpenTX, and that's that this throttle source field in the main setup tab, I've always left mine on throttle. I've never changed it. But I kind of wondered why, what is this all about? And it turns out the throttle source affects what happens with these choices that use throttle for your timers. So the THS, TH% percent, and THT options all rely on this configured item as the thing that activates the throttle. So here's the trick. You set this to channel three and you no longer need any kind of logical switch logic in here. You can just use these devices and it relies on what happens with channel three. So the nature of this is to allow your throttle lock to have an influence on whether or not your timer starts. So if you put your throttle source on channel three throttle and channel three can't operate because of a throttle lock, then your timer won't start. So just a little trick that I picked up along the way. I never knew about that before just a few days ago. Okay, let's move on to the momentary switch configuration. I've got this broken up into two parts. First, we're gonna look at trim five up and down, and then we're gonna look at trim six. So for trim five, real simple, I just made an edge function for trim five up, and that's right here in the value list. No modifiers, nothing in V2, no ands. You can and it if you want, but for this example, there's nothing that I wanted to compare it to. And then on L2, I did the same thing, except I used trim five down. An edge switch is nothing more than a momentary switch. Let's take a look in the simulator and see what this looks like. We're looking for L01 and L02 when I move the trim switch T5 up and down. L1 for up, L2 for down. So let's take a look at the simulator and watch L1 and L2. So I'm gonna go for an up first, and you can see L1 blinks. You might say, well, John, what happens when that trim switch gets all the way to the top? Will it still work? So let's move the trim switch all the way to the top, and I'm gonna hit it again. You see how L1 still beeps? It still works. The only things that I've found so far about this little trick that I don't like is that when you center the trim, you get an audible prompt from OpenTX. I haven't figured out how to turn that off yet. And then when you reach the trim extreme, you'll also get an audible prompt. Okay, so that's moving it up, L1 works. Now moving it down, look at L2. You see L2 beep over there? Okay, so we have, that's a momentary switch. For all intents and purposes, if you press up, that's a momentary switch moving up. If you press down, that's a momentary switch moving down. Okay, so that's T5 up and down, L01 and L02. Now let's take a look at what I'm doing with trim six. L04 is a sticky switch that says when trim six is moved up, go on. When trim six is moved down, go off. You can see when we fire up the simulator, L04 is off from the start. 
what I'm going to do is move trim 6 up and that should activate L04. So here's up and there's 4. That's active. That's this one right here. When I move trim 6 down, L04 should go off. So here's down and there it is. It's off. Now the edge switches, they seem backwards to me, but this is the way it works. L05 says when L4 go on. I would interpret that to mean when the L04 light is on, L05 should toggle, but that's not the way it works. It's the opposite of the way, what you'd think. I'm going to move it down and you'll see 05 flash real quickly. So here's a down movement, five flashes, fours off, and we just had a logical 05 blink for a moment. L06 is the opposite when not L04 illuminates. So I'm going to move T6 up, watch 06, it, it's going to blink real quick. Okay. So there's 06. So there's our two. When I go down, five blinks. When I go up, six blinks. So that's all we're looking for. The last thing to do is to take some action when one of our logical switches is activated. So here you can see for special function one and two, and you can do whatever you want here. This is just an example. So I've got L01 and L02 to find. Remember L01 is trim five goes up. L02 is trim five goes down. And in those cases, I have L01 set to reset timer one, which is my flight timer, and L02 set to reset timer two, which is my overall timer. Again, it's just an example. You can set this to do all kinds of different things. You can say, I want it to play a track or, or do instant trim or override a channel or whatever. There's all kinds of things you can specify any action you want. The point is that we have the switch acting like a momentary switch. That's the point. In my case, I use the reset options so I could show you very easily in the simulator how it'll work. And then on special functions four through six, notice that I have when L04 is not on, which is the default state, our throttle cut is active. So we're overriding channel three, which is our throttle. And this goes back to why in the very opening segment, I said for setup, use channel three right here. Because anything we do here to channel three modifies when these timers start working if this channel three is your throttle source on the setup tab. When L04 is off, which is the default state, we're gonna override channel three and set our throttle to negative 100, which is off. If L05 illuminates, we wanna play the track throttle disabled. If L06 illuminates, we wanna play the track throttle activated. So let's go through this real quickly in the simulator and I'll show you how it all works. Okay, notice I have L01 and L02 both set to reset my timers, timer one and timer two. So I'm gonna show you timer one and timer two. I'm gonna get them moving first. Okay, notice how my timers are moving. All I have to do to reset my flight timer is take my T5 switch and bump it up once. Click, there's a reset, back to seven minutes. Click, there's another reset, back to seven minutes. If I wanna reset timer number two, all I have to do is press down on T5, and there you go, timer number two is reset. Down again, timer two gets reset. Isn't that cool? That's a momentary switch. Didn't have to drill anything, didn't have to add any hardware, it's just a momentary switch. And even if we get all the way to the top, we can still click the button and it'll still work. It'll still reset the timer. See how it keeps going back to seven minutes? That's cool, ain't it? <laughs> Very cool stuff. All right, let's take a look at trim six. I'm gonna reset the simulator and start it over. And the first thing I wanna draw your attention to is over here on channel three, notice the throttle is negative 100. And even though I move my stick up, that channel three stays at negative 100. That's because of special function number four. If logical four is off, then override channel three and set it to negative 100. Also, the reason the flight timer isn't moving is because of what we did on that setup tab by setting the timer to be governed by channel three. Since channel three is still off, the timer doesn't move. That's why we did all that. When I move T6 forward, what's going to happen is logical switch 04 will illuminate, and that'll mean special function four is no longer in effect. So notice I've moved my throttle off zero, and I'm gonna go ahead and push up on the T6 switch throttle active there we go four is active my throttle is moved off zero and i've got control and then you also notice that my timers are moving see that 
And it doesn't matter how many times I click that button, the throttle stays active. It doesn't matter because it's a sticky. It's already on. It can't be on again. Now, when I press the down button on T6, watch what happens. Throttle disabled. My throttle goes to zero. My timers all stop. My throttle stick is still up here, but everything is stopped because L04 is off and special function four says when L04 is off, override the throttle channel. Okay, activate the throttle, hit up. Throttle active. Four is on. I've got throttle. My timers are counting. My timers are counting and there we go. All right, guys, so that's just a quick little example on how with real basic manipulation in OpenTX, you can add four fully functional momentary switches to your radio. And for you guys who fly quads, think about things like arming. Think about holding five and six down together as a way to arm your quad and say this has to be done for at least three seconds and then your quad is armed. And likewise, you can have it push up both of them simultaneously to disarm the quad. There's all kinds of things you can do with this. You just have to be creative. The only caveat that I've found so far is I have not found a way for the radio to stop telling me about trim max and min and center. If I could figure that out, this would be perfect. Maybe that's something we can get the OpenTX developers to do is disable trim warnings on T5 and T6. Anyway, there you go. Those are pretty legitimate uses for T5 and T6. You can add four full momentary switches to your radio just by messing around with the software. Hey, before you go, I just want you to know, full 63% of the people who watch RC video reviews don't subscribe. If you're a recurring visitor, I would definitely appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button. It helps small channels like mine get placement. It helps our videos get shown to more people, and that's the payback I get for putting this material together. So if you like this kind of stuff, definitely please consider subscribing to the channel. For those of you who are already subscribed to the channel, just take a second and give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you can. We get a whole bunch of viewers out there that are watching, but they're not interacting at all. It'd be great if you guys would just leave a thumbs up or even a thumbs down if you didn't like the video. Any of that would be great. Interaction with the video is what we, what we need. That's all I've got for tonight, guys. Take it easy.